Hi everyone, my name is Shirley Becker. Welcome to, welcome back to my channel. I'm now a third year graduate entry medical student at the University of Cambridge. I'm interested or currently interested in OBGYN. Today, we're gonna talk about the smear test. So even the word smear test seems to garner an emotional reaction from a lot of women. The Guardian surveyed 2,000 women and found that 60% of women were scared that the smear test would be painful and around 40% of women didn't actually know exactly what the smear test entailed. So today we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it all. In this video I'm hoping to explain one, what is a smear test and why should you do it? Two, what actually happens during a smear test? And then three, I'm gonna to touch on what sort of results you can expect from a smear test and touch on what then happens next. So the smear test is a screening program that's offered to all women in the UK from the age of 25. In short, the smear test is done to look at the health of the cervix. The cervix is an area of the reproductive system that sits at the neck of the womb and at the top of the vagina. If you imagine that this is a cervix, down here we have vagina and up there we have womb. And there's a particular area of the cervix where there are cells that are constantly changing and dividing or turning over. And this area of the cervix is particularly susceptible to infection by a virus called HPV or human papilloma virus. When this virus enters and infects the cells, it can cause abnormal changes to occur. At this stage, we call these changes pre-cancerous changes, so changes before cancer. What normally happens to the majority of people at this stage is that the body naturally will recognize that these cells are abnormal and will cause shedding of the cells and essentially remove them from your body. In some cases, the virus is able to persist for long periods of time and continue to cause abnormal changes. And these changes can not will, but can then go on to cause cancerous changes. At that point, it becomes really dangerous and sinister. So the smear test is a screening program that will take a sample of cells from your cervix. This sounds a lot scarier than it is. I will explain how this sample is taken, but it takes a sample from the cells of your cervix and looks for changes and looks for infection by this HPV virus. And the aim is essentially to pick up any abnormal changes that have occurred way before they become cancerous changes and allows us to interfere if interference is indicated so that the changes never go on to become cancerous. So really the smear test or the cervical screening program is there to save lives in the long run. So let's talk a little bit more about HPV. So HPV is that virus that can enter the cells of the cervix and cause abnormal changes to occur that can lead on and progress to become cancerous changes. HPV is most commonly transmitted through anal and vaginal sex with a person that's infected. You might now think to yourself, well, I have no signs of having an STI and I've done so many STI tests and they've all come back perfectly negative and perfectly normal and so I don't have HPV and I don't need to therefore get a smear test. Well, you're wrong. Every time you get a message to say that all of your STI results were normal, this doesn't actually include HPV. So HPV is not routinely tested for on those STI tests testing kits. And in fact, in terms of feeling like you've got an STI, HPV or the kind of HPV that would go on to cause problems in the cervix is actually a silent infection. And so there are no symptoms that you would experience that will indicate to you that you've been affected by the virus. Instead, these changes will occur and you will remain asymptomatic, which makes it really tricky to know whether you've been infected with the virus unless you do a cervical screen. So this is the only time where they actively test to see if you've been infected with HPV. HPV is also very, very, very common. 80% of sexually active women will be infected with HPV at some point throughout their lifetime. Having said that though, not all HPV is made equally. There are over a hundred strains of HPV and we can broadly categorize these into two separate strains. So you have low risk strains and high risk strains. So an infection with a low risk strain can result in either one of two things. Either nothing happens, you don't get any symptoms, you don't get any um, risk posed to your health, or you can present with warts. 
So it's the low risk strain of HPV that actually causes warts that we see on genitalia and elsewhere on the body. But the low risk strains, apart from the cosmetic uh, defect of having warts, actually don't pose any risk to your health. If we now focus on the high risk strain, getting infected with a high risk strain, so there's not a cosmetic deficit, but what can happen is that they can cause the abnormal changes in the cells of your cervix, which can then go on to become cancerous. So it's actually the high risk strain that doesn't present with any symptoms that allows you to know that you've been infected with HPV. And so that's why I emphasize how important it is to get the smear test, because this is the only time where they will actively look for this HPV virus that would otherwise be silent. So now we get to talk about the fun part. We get to talk about the actual smear test and what happens during a smear test and what you should expect if you're about to go in to have a smear test. I'm not exactly sure how the smear test has become a procedure that has generated a lot of fear and anxiety. However, I can say that any procedure that's linked to your genitals can feel quite sensitive and can feel quite daunting. So I can understand why some people may have fears about the test, but I think the best way to tackle these fears and anxieties is just to have a really good understanding of what will happen when you go to get a smear test. So I hope that I provide that understanding for you today in this video. So in short, the point of the procedure is to get a sample of cells from your cervix. So in order to even get to your cervix, right, you need to be partially undressed. For the smear test, you will be required to remove all your clothing from the waist downwards. This also includes your underwear. You should be given some privacy so for example behind a screen to get undressed so that you don't feel awkward getting undressed while someone is watching you and you should also be provided with a large sheet of tissue paper that allows you to cover up your pelvic area so that it's not exposed when it doesn't need to be. So there will be a bed um, also in the room where you'll be having your smear test and the bed will kind of have two arms hanging up like this that allow you to balance your legs um, so that your legs are raised above the level of your pelvis. You'll be required to lay on your back and then raise your legs up into the leg rests of the bed. And so this is the final position that you should be laying in throughout your procedure. So then in order for the doctor to be able to visualize the cervix or actually see the cervix with their eyes, they will need to move away the walls of your vagina. So again, if we pretend that this thing is the cervix and this is sort of the opening of the cervix, around the cervical opening, um, there is a vagina. So we have walls of our vagina that actually are collapsed inwards so that you can't see the cervix when someone is laying on their back with their legs raised in the air. You can't just see the cervix. There are walls in the vagina that are in the way and they need to be moved out of the way so that then the cervix comes into view. So the way that this is done is through a speculum. So I think this is the part that maybe creates some fear for some people. Back in the day, they used to use metal speculums and I think the metal speculum just looked a lot more anxiety provoking than the speculums we use today. So just for the purpose of this video, I went on Amazon and I bought myself a speculum. So for each new patient, a new speculum will be removed out of a package and this speculum will be lubricated before it's inserted into the vagina. So this is to prevent any friction or any discomfort. So this is what a speculum looks like, and this is the part that enters the vagina. We're now gonna pretend this is a vagina. So once lubricated, the practitioner can then insert the speculum into the vagina, and then once in the vagina, it can be opened up as to stretch out the walls and move them out of the way of the cervix. So the vagina is really good at being stretched and then recoiling back to its original shapes. So stretching the walls of the vagina to move it out of the way of the cervix shouldn't be painful. It isn't painful. You might feel some pressure, but it shouldn't be painful. So if you can see the difference between when the speculum is closed, you can't really see much on this end of the speculum. And when it's opened, you can suddenly see on the other end of the speculum. And that's where the cervix would be showing and would be coming into view. So once the cervix has come into view, the doctor is then able to obtain the sample. So again, this sounds quite scary. It sounds like, oh my God, you need to take some cells from my cervix. Surely that must mean you cut me open and, and take some cells that way. It doesn't require that much at all. If I take my hand, I barely have any nails, barely scratching, just moving my fingernail over the surface of my skin is enough to take some of the cells of my skin off. It wasn't painful, I could barely feel it, 
but I do now have a sample of my skin cells in my nail. Equally, in the smear test, a brush that's made up of plastic that doesn't have any rough or sharp edges is inserted through one end of the speculum until it reaches the opening of the cervix. So again, if we pretend that this is the cervix and this is the opening and twisting the brush, the plastic brush, at the opening of the cervix is enough to obtain a sample of cervical cells. This is not painful. I've had a smear test done and I could feel absolutely nothing when this was done. This shouldn't be painful. So once the brush has uh, collected its sample of cells, it's then removed and swirled around in a small tube with a solution. And this swirling motion allows the cells to be deposited from the brush into the solution so that it can be sent off to a lab so that they can then have a look at those cells. So at this point, the procedure is pretty much over. The only thing that's left to do is to remove the speculum and have a chat with the patient about what they can expect to happen right after the procedure and how long it will be until they get results and things like that. After the procedure, it's normal to experience a small amount of bleeding or some light spotting, but this usually resolves after a few hours. The entire procedure should take around five to 10 minutes in total. Um, the actual part where the cervical cells are sampled with the brush only takes a matter of seconds. The parts of the procedure that are long are sometimes being able to see the cervix. Sometimes even when you move the vaginal walls out of the way, you still can't see the cervix and that will require some twisting of the speculum and that's usually what takes up a lot of time. And remember, throughout the entire procedure, you should be treated with dignity and respect. And that means that you have a voice throughout the entire thing. If at any point you feel uncomfortable and you feel like you want to stop, just say that you feel uncomfortable and you want to stop. And the practitioner will be trained to just stop the procedure, allow you to take a break, or perhaps if you want to come back another day and do the smear test, and that's fine too. So hopefully now you've got a good understanding of what actually happens during a smear test procedure. So the last thing I quickly want to touch on is the results. So after the procedure, you can expect to have your smear test results in uh, around two to six weeks. So your results will tell you whether you've been infected with HPV, the high risk strain, and your results will also tell you whether your cells were abnormal or normal. So if your cells were abnormal, usually the letter might indicate the extent to which the, the changes were abnormal. So there are different levels of abnormalities or abnormalities in the cell structure that can be found. And the letter might indicate that the cell changes were borderline or perhaps high grade. If your results were abnormal, you'll be invited back for a colposcopy. So this is another procedure where they essentially stain the cervix it doesn't hurt. They stain the cervix so that they can see the extent to which the changes have occurred over the cervix. So maybe the changes are confined to a small area or actually the changes are widespread. So then the last thing I want to say with regards to the results, if you get a letter back saying that the cells of your cervix were found to be abnormal, don't be alarmed. In the vast majority of cases, where abnormal cells are found in the cervix, the body will naturally pick up that there are some abnormalities and will cause shedding of these cells so that they're removed from the body. You'll be having more frequent monitoring so that they can see the progression of the uh, changes. And if at some point medical intervention is indicated, then the cells can be removed manually. So then that brings us pretty much to the end of the video. I hope this video has been useful. And if you've been invited for your smear test, I would really urge you to not delay. You have nothing to lose, but everything to gain. And remember, this is the only way that you can find out whether you have any changes in your cervix and whether you've been infected with HPV. If you liked the video, make sure to leave it a like. If you have any questions, make sure to drop a comment. And if you wanna see more, click the subscribe button. If you wanna see more and be notified that there is more, click the notification bell. And with that, I think I've said everything. Thank you guys very much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye. Hey. I'm now gonna, I'm now gonna open the, the speculum. Um, so. <laughs> what?